Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, May 7, 2023. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the bear podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number uh, 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 694. And I was going to crack a joke, but I accidentally didn't. That's okay. I was going to say it comes out loud. Oh. Yeah. Anyways. Let's get into this. Let's talk about sex. <laughs> if you could have an audible eye roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, David. <laughs> Gary, what are we rapping about today? <laughs> so, it's a let's talk about sex, baby, because, that's right, a national holiday has arrived on the scene, and it begs the question, how did you celebrate? It's it's like one of those times when when like you celebrated and didn't even realize it. <laughs> I mean, maybe I did that this morning <laughs> Or maybe you're in the midst of celebrating it Without knowing you're in the midst of celebrating I, it I celebrated it <laughs> twice today <laughs> David nearly spit out all over the computer I, 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 was, I was trying not I was going to drink And then I was like, Mm-mm, don't even, don't even try <laughs> Well, this time around we're discussing the day here in the U.S. dedicated to self-care. Uh, we're also going to talk about the International Day that's coming up in a couple of weeks. And what the heck? Let's talk about the entire month while we're at it, right? It's it's all for health and wellness. Sure. May the fourth now, come with you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, boy. Pun Ooh. daddy is on the scene, apparently. So, uh... For those that are eagle-eared listeners of the podcast, way back, uh, episode 350, we did talk about this subject in a way. Um, it was a Let's Talk About Sex. However, the title was Give Me a Hand. That was and Daddy we Hadrian was our special guest. Yes. That was when we were doing the fun time. Yes. And LTAS was not even LTAS yet. <laughs> we just called it Let's Talk About Sex. Uh, and I think we kind of started using the acronym right around that time, maybe a little bit after. So, uh, but in that one, we talked not only about masturbation, but we also talked about hand jobs. So this one is kind of revisiting the subject. However, technically today, May 7th, every year in the U.S. is National Masturbation Day, hmm. which I was not aware of. Neither was I. Until I was scrolling in Tumblr, or sorry, Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old. I'm allowed to do that. Uh, and lo and behold, no pun intended, came across the announcement. <laughs> it was like, wait, what? Wow. I was like. So then I had to look it up because I was like, oh, is this is this a real thing? And it is legitimately there. There is a, a, a thing about this. So we have for those of you that are interested, 
we have some um, <laughs> links that are going to be there. Hey, Owen. <laughs> the dragon I have in my room is made up. Well, you know, that's that's up for for grab, so to speak. Is it um, a bad dragon? But yes. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> Producers jumping ahead. So uh, the first National Masturbation Day was May seventh of nineteen ninety five. After sex positive retailer Good Vibrations declared the day in honor of the Surgeon General Jocelyn Elders who was mm. fired by President Bill Clinton in 1994 for suggesting masturbation be part of sex education curriculum for students. Interesting. Right? I mean, right, I so... agree. The only thing is, how would that be implemented? What, the firing or the day? <laughs> no, <laughs> the, 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 the masturbation and sex education in schools. The, I think they would just discuss it as a matter of fact, like they discuss other things as a matter of fact, probably yeah. without visuals or any real detail. Yeah. The that's idea good, is it's, you know, because it is technically sex or else we wouldn't be having this conversation on let's talk about sex. So, um, so it's sort of a, it makes sense that people should be educated on it, um, particularly like sexual younger contact. folk. Yes. Usually on your own. I mean, usually on your own. Sometimes with others. Just depends. Yeah, you can what have group masturbation are. sessions. Yeah. So apparently this all started because... Jocelyn Elders, the Surgeon General for the U.S., was like, this is something that should be considered for sex education. And I'm like, okay, here we are nearly 30 years later. And I'm like, ooh, the climate is very different. So this is definitely not something that the current Sur Surgeon General is going to revisit. But I think wow. the, the, uh, the concept was that they were going to Probably introduce it, but like mm. Jeff, to Jeff's point, how are they going to discuss it? Yeah. So yeah, I uh, I find that intriguing. But um, so that was May seventh of ninety five, and then International Masturbation Month came about to basically be the entire month of May. Yes. Um. So, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of intriguing. And there's been some recent articles in uh, the past year. So, for an example, HITC.com. I'm not quite familiar with them, but they had an article um, about how May the 7th event uh, first started, which is a little bit of what we were discussing. This is an article from 2020. Um, and they kind of talk about the NationalDayCalendar.com website. Sorry. Which cracks me up to no end because like pretty much every day of the year can have multiple holidays quote unquote right um, a lot of them celebrating culture or food or different things of that nature but yeah i uh i find that very intriguing um that whole concept but yeah it expanded to a month and then there's actually an international day which i think is the 28th of may so I think that's where it abuses me that we have a day here in the U.S., then we have an international day, and then there's like a whole month. So, welcome oh. to Mastermation Times. Mastermation Times. Mastermation Times. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> oh, and charades, that's how they teach it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One word, or two words, first word. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so. Yeah, like, uh, so uh, this is more about, like, us getting an education and then also passing that on to others. Um, mm -hmm. 
I also put in a couple links like uh, from Planned Parenthood. Is masturbation healthy? Which, if you've heard the urban legends. Oh, gosh. The word on the street is that it's completely healthy. Um, and that there have been some studies. I didn't look those up to put in links uh, that especially for those who have testicles and a penis uh, that masturbation can actually help in delaying or preventing possibly don't quote me on this uh, with uh, prostate cancer. Mm. So, and helping with hormone levels. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Huh. Sorry. I, I, there's a, there's a, there's a pun joke that, so years ago, so we're going to tell a story. Years ago, I did a show, a theater production, and it was, um, I think it was based on Hardy Boys, but I played um, a Nurse Ratchet character, and um, she, she has a joke. Like the line was, uh, um, like one of the guys says, um, "What's a hormone?" And I say, I, "I can, I know what a hormone." You know, kind of like it was meant to be a sexual joke. That's mm-hmm. poor. Well, yeah. Anyway. Bom, bom, bom. Anyway. Bom, bom, bom. Um, yeah. So, per Planned Parenthood. Stop. <laughs> you want to know what the difference is between a vitamin and a hormone? What's the difference between a vitamin and a hormone? You can't hear a vitamin. <laughs> what? You can't hear a vitamin. Oh. <laughs> That's fair. Very fair. Thank you for the pun sure. joke, my partner, fiance, and future husband. Of you. you too. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah, so according to Planned Parenthood, uh research has shown that there can't be health benefits. Um releases releases sexual tension, helps reduce stress, helps you sleep better. Uh, improve your self-esteem and body image. Hmm. Can help treat sexual problems. Uh, can relieve cramping, months, muscle tension, uh, strengthen muscle tone in your pelvic and anal areas. Good, I guess. Um, it goes on to explain that masturbation also helps you figure out what you like sexually. Where do you yeah. want to be touched? How much pressure feels good? How fast or how slow? Um, learning how to have orgasms on your own can make it easier to having one with a partner. This way you can help communicate what feels good. Right. Because you already know that for yourself. And it says when you're comfortable with sex, your body, and talking to your partner, you're more likely to feel comfortable about protecting yourself from STDs or unintended pregnancies, which I think is a very interesting perspective. Yeah. Because in my role, you know, one of my perspectives of advocacy is talking to partners, asking them what their status um, is. More importantly, when was the last time they were tested or have they ever been tested? Do they know about STDs and HIV? Those type of things. Mm. Um, and uh, if, or even in this case, like, because um, it's going to be that season again, I don't like phrasing it that way, but with uh, MPOX. Mm. So um, that's uh, just a week or two weeks ago here in the US, MPOX was, uh, I don't want to say eradicated, I don't remember what the right word is, but there were zero cases. Oh, okay. However, abroad we have seen a handful of cases out of literally thousands and thousands and thousands just a handful of cases where individuals were reinfected oh and it's bringing up an interesting discussion in the public health circles about immunization and like if self if you've been exposed do you have any immunity or not um and these cases are kind of saying some may not they also notably were not vaccinated. So mm. I bring that all up as like another part of that discussion that you have with a partner. So by knowing 
yourself and what you like, not only can you have those discussions with a partner potentially, but more importantly, like ask them, what do they like? And what, you know, do they prefer? Fair. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Masturbation is neat. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I was reading Owen's comment (laughs) in the live chat. Oh. <laughs> hey Zeus is watching you. You know, hey Zeus, the peeping Tom who followed you home from the bus. He's a voyeurist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're gonna have to stop for a second and, and it's kind of funny. I'm looking at the I didn't see our um layout until now. Well, I've seen it, but I didn't really I wasn't paying attention. Um I'm going to ask a question, Gary. And you're going to have to tell something. <laughs> now that you brought it up, I knew there was yeah. probably a question coming. So, question. Yes. Traffic cone. Yes. Question mark. <laughs> and? <laughs> Jeff doesn't really think there's much of a question about a traffic cone. <laughs> Are we are we trying to install VLC media and using it? <laughs> <laughs> it's such a, a like great use VLC media player to uh, yes. play your your pirated porn. porn. That's, yeah, that's right. That's what some, the, the some, the, some the of our younger audience is not going to understand what that conversation point was just now. They'll be like, "Wait, what?" Uh, VLC is, is still used. It is. Yeah. I use it now. I use it on this computer. It's easier when you have multiple things that come out of different formats and you can watch videos easily on it. So, yeah. But anyway, beside the point, that's what, what I'm your, going to assume that you What meant, was your question? Oh. That that's what that was for? I know what it's for, but that's what I'm going to oh, assume. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. <laughs> do tell, David. What is it for? Nope. <laughs> Well, it, is, it does have a nice conical shape. There are other things which are also conical and a little bit smaller. I'm quiet now. <laughs> I will say this. I have personally witnessed a video in which a traffic cone was used as part of a masturbation moment. Uh huh. I was not ready for that. <laughs> Neither was, was I. Many years ago, decades <laughs> ago now at this point. Um, it was on someone's personal website. They had filmed themselves. Uh, yeah. Something about a person that I personally knew that I was not aware of about them until I watched the video. And that is just something that uh, you can't forget. Unsee. Can't unsee it. Well, and what's ironic is now, all these years later... It made an impression on me in a way at, at that time in my life, and now I'm like, meh. <laughs> like, which is a an interesting segue ish to the questions about you know, um, like how like has anything? I know we're all you know older bears as we've talked about it now in several episodes in the past few months. <laughs> have your have your masturbation um tactics times amounts changed kind of has it or has it kind of stayed the same i mean how when i was in college there was one day i was having a discussion with my ra and talking about 18 times but uh, mm-hmm. Otherwise, it really <laughs> depends on the day. <laughs> I kind of broke David. <laughs> um, I was going to say I agree with Jeff. Whether I was younger, half my age or less, um, yeah, like the frequency <laughs> with which was was greater. Yeah, the refractory period was much less. Mm-hmm. Um, the Getting tired afterwards came came on at like with age. 
like there was a point probably in my 40s my early 40s where i was like this is this is how we fall asleep or this is how we take a nap because <laughs> like, we basically tire ourselves out and you're done and you're going to take a nap and 20 minutes later you wake up there you go <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I mean, I will say that things have changed. There was a, there was a period of time where uh, toys were, were a piece of it, but that kind of has gone by the wayside. I think, I don't know, I just think it's about mood. Mm. And uh, sometimes it's efficiency. Like if you have a time frame. So here's okay. an example. You wake up in the morning, you have to go to work. Like, you only have so much time available to you because, in theory, the clock is ticking. And say, like, you wake up and you have to be to work in two hours. So you can't spend, I mean, you could possibly try, given the circumstances, to spend an hour and 45 minutes, right, doing some self-care and possibly edging. But there comes a point where it's like, you're going to be late for work. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Which goes into actually some of the things that are in the men's health uh, magazine article from 2021 called five signs that you're masturbating uh, too damn much. So one of the things that they mention in that um, is that your job suffers. Hmm. Uh, now here they say you're consistently watching porn at work or you're late to a meeting because you were masturbating in the bathroom. Um which are which is fair. Those are a little bit more extreme than what I was just saying, but yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, yeah, the job suffering thing. I can see that being a thing. Um, mm-hmm. And also, you know, if you take time, if you're a, you know, if you're a, it's all about you know the journey and not the destination. And sometimes you can get in that mindset of like really enjoying yourself. You sometimes can lose track of time depending on what all you're doing. And that's probably not a good thing to have happen while you're on the clock. (laughs) Very true. Um, And if you're a person who finds themselves like being into gooning, like that is, that is not a time Mm -hmm. uh, efficient, a, a short time frame investment, I guess. Um, so yeah, like there's there's different ways that those things could impact your personal life. So Mr. Gary, Mr. Gary, you said you said something that maybe our audience may not understand okay. or know the definition of. What is gooning? <laughs> Boy, uh, <laughs> Jeff, you I'm got a clip with... ready? Wait a minute. Wait, there's a different clip. Uh, my infamous introduction. It's not on the oh. docs. It's, oh, it's oh. Damon just threw this at me. Hold on. <laughs> Where would I put this at? It's Urban Dictionary with Gary. Doing it on the fly, people. Doing it on the fly. (laughs) And yes, I did it. So, (laughs) yay. Excellent. So, gooning, G-O-O-N-I-N-G, may be most simply defined as the state usually achieved after a prolonged edging session. When a man becomes completely hypnotized by the feeling that radiates from their penis. Since gooning state can only be achieved after edging... The man's dick will have become mightily aroused at this point, and every caress of the male genitals are subject to trigger a potent elation. Mm. Elation, not ejaculation. Right. As the man keeps edging and thus keeps experiencing intense pleasure, he enters a state of trance where his mind intimately merges with his cock. The gooning state where he and his dick become one. Namaste. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) That was so funny. Unintended. Anyways, (laughs) to be even more accurate, 
when the gooning state is achieved, the man's body becomes, for all intents and purposes, an appendage to his erection. When this state is achieved, the male becomes freed of all social codes of conduct. His arousal alone dictates his reactions. And as a result, a gooned out man will become very expressive and demonstrative. He may become very vocal, while his body and face might take on undignified expressions or poses, all in response to the intensely exquisite caress uh, caresses that his penis may be exposed to, hence the term goon, since at this point the man effectively looks like a silly, foolish, or eccentric person. Interesting. Gooning is not a narcissistic manifestation. Narcissism is extreme selfishness with a grandiose view of one's own talents. Rather, gooning is closer to a meditative experience where the mind and the body align focused on a single thought or, in this case, a feeling. Interesting. That is a much longer definition than I I expected, but that's okay. Um, It is also from 2012. Wow. So we're looking at a... uh, 11 year old definition now i mean there's some there are some others here but that actually is uh i think the top rated one yeah in terms of votes so on on urban dictionary i don't remember this from before but you can thumbs up or thumbs down definitions so this is the one that most people have selected that they prefer that was a submission oh god sometimes the the like examples are kind of funny like there's one definition that's like two down and it's like big bro dude i'm sorry i didn't know you were jacking off little bro i'm not just jacking off bro i'm j- fucking dooning on this dick I'm like okay <laughs> who, who who is talking like that anyway uh, well that's from 2005 so that's seven years earlier <laughs> yeah it's rather interesting because I've, I've heard of i've heard this phrase before and i've seen it you know i've seen videos of people in the act quote unquote of it um it's rather interesting, and I know people who do this, and I was mm-hmm. like, okay, like it's a to the point. It is somewhat an extreme form of masturbation. Mm-hmm. Um, it is something that will not, you know, it's not going to just happen. Um, I don't think you immediately get into that space like in two seconds. It's it's not one of those immediate moments. It's going to take some time. Um, and yeah, rather interesting. So had we known, we could have informed our audience ahead of time to prepare for today. So they could have cleared their schedule if they wanted to and (laughs) celebrate. Yes. Like your goal is to reach the end of the, of the episode and not get off. Well, that sounds something it? like that a Dom Daddy would say. So, do we need to like start talking in ASMR? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't need to keep doing that. Absolutely not. That would be appropriate. <laughs> yeah, just stroke it. <laughs> God. <sighs> <laughs> and demonetized <laughs> like not like we are but you know <laughs> they're really <laughs> like we're making any money but anywho um yeah uh god i'm also now going back to 18 times and that's still like something i had a oh so i had the record I had, not, and this, granted, this wasn't just masturbation. This was I was uh, I was in my twenties. I was in college. I had gone to a bathhouse with friends for the very first time. Hush. <laughs> and um, over the six-hour period, because it was a, it was Pride weekend, so you didn't have eight-hour rooms like you did before. But over the six-hour period, I think I came ten times. But that was a, you know, 
obviously experiencing something for the very first time, experiencing a lot of people all at once and truly enjoying myself as a 20 something youngin mm -hmm. <laughs> who had that, you know, virility and vitality and didn't immediately like, like you said, get tired <laughs> sometimes after the first or second time. Right. Um, yeah. Well, and that's just it. Um, I think there is something to be said for that time of your life cycle. Like we, we live longer now than we have in the, in the past. Well, mm -hmm. supposedly our, <laughs> that's fudged a little bit. I think, thank you. Pandemic. Not really. Um, <clears throat> has affected length of like, human mm -hmm. lifespan but there yeah there was a time where we didn't we didn't live much like into our 30s and 40s so yeah like the late teen years and early 20s is like the pinnacle of the virility like you know doesn't even take yeah. it, you know anything you know but a thought or uh you know a fabric <laughs> brush or something and you know a gust of wind like yeah <laughs> just... <laughs> right and you're like okay i have to do something with this now uh-huh so, or yep. feel awkward about it because it happens in, you know, moments that it's socially not appropriate. Yeah, I've, uh, nowadays, once or twice, a couple, every couple of days, maybe. Um, maybe once a day, but it varies. And again, in a lot of ways, it's because of time. It's really mm -hmm. time. You know, wake up call. Uh, we had to help fall asleep. Yeah, uh, not even then. No, I don't. I don't. No. I mean, not all the time. Yeah, not all the time. I was trying to think. I was like, do I? No, I don't usually. I mean, there were points in time where that was sort of the given, like, <laughs> like kick in, jerk off, get all the energy out, spend your energy, and then go to bed. Like that was that's fair. Right. That happened. Well, uh, and I'm I'm curious about something, and I don't want you to answer to this, Damon, because like it wouldn't be a fair representation. But I'm curious if there's ever been a study done or any qualitative data about whether or not masturbation rates decline with individuals who are partnered that mm. that cohabitate, because mm. I would think that one aspect of masturbating is like presumably Jeff and I living alone individually, like your time is your own. So True. it's one twenty three in the afternoon. <laughs> can have some, you know, have a moment, <laughs> have some me time. <laughs> right. And if I was sharing my life with a partner, especially cohabitating, I may or may not necessarily be so, um, I guess, comfortable or free with my mm. time. I mean, some couples are, from what I see online, and that's one of the things I appreciate that, you know, some individuals within a, a partnership are like, well, now there's something to address or deal with or whatever. And part of me fantasizes and thinks if I had a partner like that, I'd be like, I think that could be fun. But <laughs> again, I'm also like, I could also see myself being annoyed, being like, <laughs> I'm in the middle of something right now. Right. Like I'm working on the podcast prep. I'm watching a TV show, watching a movie, trying to wash dishes. Like Leave me I know alone. myself. That, right. I know myself. I'm very focused. <laughs> so that would, that would probably annoy me and I'd have yeah. to grow with comfort over time to, That's fair. to be like, Oh, okay. Apparently we're going <laughs> to, we're going to change direction of focus. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I just it's I think there would be if there's not one, I'm sure there's gotta be something out there. Mm -hmm. A study about there about that somewhere. Um I can see it being a potential um good and bad, not good and bad, but just like increase or decrease due to partnership. Yeah, I can see that being a possibility. Right. And I think that's a, a key thing um, to think about is like if you're like when I had lived with other people, um, mm -hmm. had roommates when I was in college, um, I was much more conscious of my time 
and like if I would um, spend any of it in that kind of a, a moment, like if they weren't home, I think I felt more comfortable like to not have a concern about like noise. I mean, and I, and I imagine some people don't think about this. Like they're just like, fuck it. Like mm-hmm. I'm going to jerk off. And if I'm loud, I'm loud. If they hear, they hear. Uh, <laughs> I'm not that type of person. I grew up in a household where I had a parent who worked third shift and slept mostly during the day. So I crafted in my personality to be quiet and be respectful around people because that was the thing. You know, my mother was trying to get sleep during the day. So I would intentionally avoid doing anything to make noise and wake them up. So I'm, I am much more self-aware of those kind of things. Like my space, my time, Uh like sounds, those type of things. And I, and it's constant all the time. Like I think about it when I'm at work, just in terms of like nearby offices and stuff like that. And, and I know that some people are not like that because I have coworkers that like sing to themselves in their office and I can clearly hear them through the wall. And like, you know, (laughs) that, that speaks to me and reminds me like they're not aware of themselves or their bubble, like how, big it is they might think it's just like confined to their immediate couple of feet and i'm like nope not at all no like i had to i was i grew up with um you know family and i had a i had a sister who was three years younger than me and i had brothers who were seven years older than me Mm -hmm. and um for most of my well up until high school, you know, maybe middle school, um, I didn't have a room to myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I then I had a room to myself, but I was in a very crazy background and masturbation. No, you don't. Don't. Right. Yeah. Um, did I find out what it is? Absolutely. Did I do it? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> I did a lot of things in middle school. So, um, and then um, when I, when my parents divorced and I went to live with my mom and my sister, um, me and my sister's rooms were right next to each other. Mm. So, yeah, I either, I had to be really, really, really quiet, which is kind of where you're coming from, or I didn't do it, which was sort of the what it happened often. I don't right. recall doing as much. Um, then I went to college, and I only had a roommate for my first year. And after that, I lived by myself, so. Yeah. Well, and I, and I will say that there's something pretty freeing about living by yourself, because then, like I said, your space is pretty much yours, and, you know, while you have, you may have neighbors uh, mm-hmm. above, below, or beside you, um like that's another matter of like you know sound conductivity and that kind of stuff so yeah yeah like back to sound one of the there was when i was living in the I, before i moved into the house here i lived in an apartment and i lived there for 11 years and i stopped caring if my part if the neighbor heard anything even though it was kind of a similar situation knowing what i know now because i saw their apartment their bedroom Mm -hmm. is right next to my living space so i had a studio so my living room which is where my tv was which was where most of the time videos were played because i had to Mm. um was kind of there and if they were coming up the steps or um what have you you heard what you heard and I was, you know, I'm, I, 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 you know, if they if they had a problem, they would say something, and I didn't hear a problem. I should say, um, and I did have the occasional moment where I was like, I hope you're not home, but that was more when um, I had a a not Jim, um, another partner who was a sexual partner who was loud. Mm-hmm. Because that happened a few times, and I don't want, you know, that's fine. I don't care if it's me. 
But if you hear, obviously, you hear someone else, you're kind of like, who the fuck is that? Like, right. might have a problem. <laughs> when you shut the fuck up, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I was looking at um, Beta Pup Max uh, comment in the <laughs> in the chat. Um, yeah, so I agree with you. Like that's a that's a consideration. Um, yeah, and I've always thought of that. Mm-hmm. Like, and I've been told repeatedly by some individuals that I'm I'm reserved and quiet, and. Mm. I never really thought about that much, but it, in context, thinking back what I was saying earlier, I'm like, oh, it totally makes sense. Yeah. Um, there's only been a couple of times where I haven't necessarily held back. Um, <laughs> well, and notably, one of those times was a little awkward. Uh, <laughs> it, well, to be fair, this was this was sex with somebody else, not masturbation, but. Um, let's just say after the loudest part, um, the crescendo, it was notably very quiet. Uh, this was at a campground. Uh huh. So the it, whole immediate area afterwards was silent. <laughs> which I found more embarrassingly <laughs> awkward. Well, to be honest, you were putting on a show and people were wanting to hear every bit and bobble of it. Like, well, <laughs> as I think about it, I'm like, I probably would have, like, I was embarrassed, but I probably would have, like, melted into the earth if there had been, like, applause or like <laughs> boots and hollers or something like that afterwards. Right, right. I would have, I would have probably would have yeah. died. Would have died. Oh. But oh. yeah. Um, but no, yeah, it, I've I still to this day, like I just try to be very conscious of of time and space and like surroundings and those type of things. But you know, to each their own. Mm-hmm. Um and it's ironic because I think about how, like, this very weekend, there's an event going on. Several people I know that are at it. And so uh-huh. I know they're having a good time. Oh, uh, yeah. Because I've seen photos and videos. <laughs> uh, but I have to kind of be amused because this part of the conversation we're having, even in that context of that space, I don't think I would be so... Vocal? Yeah. Like, like yeah. Uh, unrestrained. I guess is a, a way to phrase it because I would be thinking about how like there's people around and while maybe they don't care, I don't know that. Mm-hmm. Like maybe they're legitimately trying to take a nap <laughs> or something. So anyway, I just worked off so I can go to bed. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> it's 3 a.m. God damn it. <laughs> well, <laughs> that kind of relates back to for the love of God, come already. You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. God. It's like there's time to invest. Mm-hmm. And then there's kind of like, okay. Oh. <laughs> right. You're like, yeah. I, especially if you're with another person like let's well like when the, we talked about we referenced with three fi- episode 350 it's like if you're giving someone a hand job it's like there's a certain point where you're like okay so i am not a robot yeah like my hand my arm my wrist like yeah something something's got to give something's got to come or some something's got to somewhere we're gonna stop like i i've i've been there like, so that the brings up an interesting point. Have any of us reached that with ourselves? Like, where you're, like where you're masturbating and then you're kind of like, this isn't happening. Oh, all the time. Like you realize all it's not time. going to end in an orgasm. You're just like, and it, and it could be for various reasons, but mm-hmm. you're kind of like, uh, no. Jeff, you were saying? All the time. That's why he said to begin with. 
Do you really have oh. anything more to say? Oh, I thought there, I thought there was going to be more context, but that's fine. Oh, uh, okay. Um. Mm. Yeah, more now I think than you know back then. Mm. Um, I will say probably, um, and usually it's a again a matter of time. Like I have fifty minutes left on my lunch break or something like that, and I mm. need to to do. I'm you know I'm feeling right. something, but let's let's see what happens and. Right. I don't have, I don't have, I don't want to, I'm like, ah, I can't, it's not going to happen right now. Or the opposite of it, like, not edging, like, you're not, like, trying to not come, mm-hmm. but you are getting to the point where you're, something isn't working. Sometimes it's the dick, sometimes it's your hand, <laughs> sometimes it's your wrist, right. your arm, your shoulder, um, uh, or just mentally not position. being stimulated. That too. Right. Like to Jeff's point, I think that's the key thing, right? Like like the orgasm ending, quote unquote, the release may not like may not be on the horizon because you're just not stimulated enough. Like whether that be physically, um, emotionally, visually, like whatever, whatever the things are that you're going through, are you watching something? Are you reading something? Are you listening to something? Like, mm-hmm. like what is it that um, is giving you yeah. that? And there can also be other things like, uh, all right, I'll ask this question. <laughs> it's going to feel oh. like a, like a, like a, I don't want to call it a truth or dare, but um, have you ever gotten a cramp while masturbating? Yes. Absolutely. I have gotten a cramp, gotten like tired. Yeah, I have gotten. I have um, maybe a little TMI, but if I've had moments where I've been laying, if I'm laying down or laying Mm -hmm. on like the couch, uh, and my legs are spread out and I'm jerking off, I have Mm -hmm. gotten a cramp in my thigh. Because of just the stretching that you are doing, right. in a sense, the muscles are being pulled, and right, right. I've gotten, a, I've gotten a calf cramp. Mm. And let me tell yeah. you, like the the dissonance of a Charlie horse, yes. while you're jacking off, like <laughs> your brain is like, what the fuck is uh-huh. going on? Because like. Part of you is like in a pleasure mode and another part of you is not. Yep. And so you're like, it is one of the most awkward things because then you are trying to like release the cramp, which Mm -hmm. in most times is to put pressure on the muscle to change what's happening with the muscle Mm -hmm. fiber. And so you're like trying to stand or lean against a wall or push on something or whatever it is. Something. God. I know I've had that happen and it is it is not fun. Let me tell you, especially when it's, you're in a good like like baiting session, like you're really, you know, good and going at it and you're really enjoying yourself and all of a sudden, yeah, the Charlie horse one sucks the most because it'll hit and mm-hmm. there's nothing you can do. <laughs> like it's not a try to bypass the pain. No. No, you you can't, because those fuckers hurt. Well, it's interesting because um, Beta Pup said in the live chat, back pain. I've tried to choose baiting over ibuprofen. <laughs> I thought the endorphins <laughs> might take the pain away. Ha ha! It didn't. <laughs> and I, and I totally understand that. Like that's part of what that that chemical release you know, of the endorphins and the serotonin and all that, you know, that's happening with an orgasm, like your body gets flooded with quote unquote, happy hormones. Um, It is sort of short lived, um, depending on the circumstance. I, for a period of time, looking back on it, I was giving myself stress headaches. Like, it's kind of a convoluted story, but like, I was 
creating a physical um, situation where I was giving myself stress headaches um, oh, wow. due to muscle tension. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know that until I started going to a chiropractor over a year ago. And because it was getting so bad, like I was eating Tylenol, like it was, oh. it was one of these points where I was like, I have to, I have to do something about this. Like, I can't just keep popping pills. Like I need to still be looked at. And so I started going to a chiropractor and it's been really great. Um, because what I determined and it came out of it is, and I still go for treatments every couple of weeks is like, I carry my stress in my shoulder blades predominantly on my left side. And so like the muscles across that part of my skull and down my neck into my shoulder blade is where I tend to carry tension. And what was happening was I wasn't resolving it or addressing it or paying attention to it for probably years. And it just built up to a certain point where like I would masturbate and I would end up giving myself a stress headache. And that was part of the, okay, now there's a problem. Like, yeah, like this is supposed to be enjoyable, not turning into pain. (laughs) Honey, no, you can't be fucking with this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. We like maybe fuck with my sleep, maybe fuck with my concentration, not fuck with my masturbation. No, uh-uh. Figure this out now. Figure <laughs> out what the fuck is wrong right now. Right. Well, and like in the men's health article about, you know, the five, um, signs that you're masturbating too damn much. One of the things they also say is that you hurt yourself. Um, mm. You can physically cause harm from doing it too much. Um, you can end up with like scar tissue. You can end up with chafing. You can end up with um, sores. Um, you know, there are different things that could come about uh, from that. Like you could technically um, end up with a uh, skin laceration or opening and then scabbing. Mm. Um, if you're yes. really not um, being aware of those things, which is sometimes why, you know, masturbation can be better for people if they use a lubricant um, mm-hmm. or, you know, um, if they don't have, especially if they don't have much movement with their skin. Um, if the, like the shaft of your penis, whether you're cut or uncut, doesn't really move a whole lot. Uh, if like the amount of blood that fills up the the tissue in the organ, like, makes you basically like as you know rock hard as a you know steel bar (laughs) like you know the there may not be a whole lot of give um so that's part of the thing where we talked about earlier that you can learn about your body like sensations and things but then you can also determine like going dry is not the thing um Mm. and so you may need to use some type of lubricant and there's a you know lots of different products out there yeah more so now than ever um yeah because back when we were much younger, um, I think there was pretty much just three or four products that a lot of us were aware of that we were abusing because they were technically not meant to be used <laughs> as a masturbatory aid. Yeah, uh, I'm thinking of Vaseline, uh, Abilene, um, Pond's cold cream. Oh, God. Uh, your mother would never forgive you. Uh, no. Jergens hand lotion. <laughs> um, Why Jergens specifically? <laughs> I, I don't know. Ask, ask the people of the generation. And I feel like I'm forgetting one. I feel like there's a fifth. Um, anyways, that were just like pretty common, um, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. And now, you know, we've got all these like lubricants and and Mm -hmm. jack off lotions and so on and so forth um that have for like masturbation i think there's one called bader bomb yes yeah um so yeah i think that there's much more available to to assist or or with those things yeah it's funny because i will admit hello everyone um i tend to masturbate dry like Mm -hmm. But I also moisturize my skin often. Um, So my skin is fairly soft. Um, Soft and supple, as Heidi would say. Um, But uh, on the times when I have gotten to a point where I kind of just need to get off, 
um, I will use lubricant because I know for me, lubrication tends to make it happen faster. That's right. No, I, I hear you, Damon, because um, so there are different kinds of, of potential lubricants uh, or uh, substances. I don't know how else to phrase that. Um, the viscosity can be an issue, but you're right. Like for some individuals that can be, it can heighten sensitivity, mm -hmm. um, which then means that the time invested would be shorter, um, which maybe is desired by some people, but there are also substances, you know, products that have been created that are desensitizing. Mm -hmm. um, some of, And some of them have extra like additives to them to give them like uh, different effects. So like there's heating, warming, type gel mm -hmm, stuff. Mm -hmm. There are some that are tingling, some that have menthol. Um, and all of those can have different kind of feeling and effect on you. The thing to be aware of, though, when it comes to that, especially if you're going to have a partner, is <clears throat> to keep in mind, like, sensitivity to substances. Um, mm -hmm. You know, at all, like, I've known people who have used oil, not, um, like, well, not motor oil, but, like, um, like essential oils. Yeah. or um different kinds of things and i understand like being experimental and trying stuff i i feel like you should be very cautious about that because if it's if it's true like chemical makeup um is some of that stuff like it can be a little caustic um mm -hmm. while we think of oils as a lubricant you know like clove oil cinnamon oil maybe you really like the smell of certain things but that could be you know potentially um an irritant as opposed mm -hmm. to, you know, being helpful. Yeah. So, and of course there's all the urban legends about people using all sorts of products, you know, when they're young because they don't know any better. So they're like using West End cooking oil or Crisco God. or just, you know, whatever they can get their hands on um, that's available. We've probably heard or read the stories of our generation back in the day where, you know, men use like olive oil or, you know, just <laughs> random things as a lubricant because it's what was it's available. Fair. Right. And then they come back to work and everybody's like, does anyone smell fried chicken? <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> Anyways, that was a bad God joke. God bless it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting choice of words. Oh. Oh. I mean, but I think about it, you know, and... and Say a thousand years ago, you know, you, you know, we as a species, we were just trying to figure out what worked right. and not necessarily knowing what would be effective. Um, you know, so there, there's lots of different yeah. things of that nature. I think now about how the world has been revolutionized in the past five years with the amount of toys like True. good gravy who who out there doesn't have a masturbation sleeve or a vibrating butt toy or something. Um, <laughs> okay. So one of the hosts does it. Um, <laughs> you have no masturbation toys. I, I had some, but I don't know where they are. I don't really use it that often. Right. And it's fair. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I think there are things that are kind of novelty and by novelty, I mean like they're the thing to have. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. like um, Love Sense is a very popular brand, uh, has yeah. various products. Um, some of them are internal, some of them are external, some are both, I think, um, you know, that do multiple different things. And we've discussed this before, like when we had Tony on, I can't quite remember what episode it was, but we talked about like cybersecurity when it came to sex toys, especially uh -huh. if they use apps or, you know, uh, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, like there, there's lots of different things. But I think about that now and I'm like, dang, who doesn't have a, a whatever, um, you know, as a as a jack off aid, I guess, or whatever you want to call that it. Does my, does my iPad count? <laughs> um. I mean, it can. Or is it the websites I'm looking at? <laughs> yes. That's fair. Yes. Very true. Very true. We listeners, the episode where we talked about the internet, internet security and let's talk about sex was 651. CLL 651. 
Yeah, as I was gonna say, it was relatively recent in the past year, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, June 15th, 2022. Woo, 2011. Woo. Um, yeah, the idea of, of toys has definitely changed and our aids essentially um and i think a lot of the discussion about toys and were no longer as taboo and risque as they are now um you know a lot of people have videos and such of them actually you know using toys as their aids to get off and it's kind of fun um learning more about yourself and your body and what you enjoy and the pleasures that you get from you know using those toys and using those aids to help um it's great you know i've um <laughs> look at go yeah i have some for sure i have um a few um my again, my usual issue is kind of we keep mentioning it, but like time, you know, that's something you have to, to me, set time aside to kind of use because usually you'll don't need lubrication, and if you're trying to get on with your day, you know, you're gonna have to clean yourself up and da da da, and 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 it's kind of like I don't really want to do all that, so you just sort of stick with Rosie Palm and her five friends. <laughs> You know, speaking of toys and those type of things, as I feel we're probably moving towards wrapping up. Did you know that Bad Dragon has a sale specifically for National Masturbation Day Drop? I do not. I did not. Well, that's why there's a link. So, yeah, Bad Dragon has a sale. Um I'm not I'm I'm aware of their of the product and the brand. Um I don't know them that well. Uh but it says originally May 7th, 1995, National Masturbation Day is definitively a holiday that can't be beat. Or maybe <laughs> it can. We want to encourage everyone to celebrate. So we are dropping pre-made inventory toys at 10 a.m. Pacific with discounts of 15% up to 25% off, including a variety of our masturbators and toys in large and extra large sizing. And then it goes on to explain, and some of this I don't quite fully understand. It says, please be aware of the following custom order toys will not be discounted. Pre-made inventory toys are dropping at 12 PDT. Um, drop will not be dis discounted as part of the promotion. Inventory toys will not receive a discount if ineligible. Yeah. I'm not, I don't know their products that well, so I'm like, uh, okay. I guess that's the thing. Oh. And then you can click through and see the various... The Types. Yeah. Okay. I've heard of Bad Dragon. I've, I've seen it. <laughs> Wait, sorry. Yeah. 2,385 <laughs> toys found. A lot. That's a lot of toys. Good Lord. They come and in all shapes and sizes. Shapes and sizes and textures and oh my. Firmness. <laughs> Product types, features. There's something called a dragon mount. There's also something called a cum tube. Oh my. I mean, I kind of understand mm -hmm. what a suction cup is. It's pretty standard. Mm -mm, mm -mm, well, what mm -mm. do you know? The archer, that's kind of amusing to me, um, is the human representation. Huh. As uncut. Then, of course, there's all the, the fantasy style ones. Wow. Dildos, wow. masturbators, packers, squirts, vibes, wearables. Huh. Fun, fun, fun. Um, neat. I... <laughs> Bad Dragon's a little outside of my comfort zone. We'll call that. We'll say they that. They do have yeah, sheets. I, I I understand. And that might be something I might consider in the future. But Okay, this one has to glow in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
It looks like it's made of color of glow in the dark material. Color is Ectoplasm Legacy. Which one are you looking? It's called the Apollo. Wow. Stock available now. That's nice. Size is small. That is a high res image. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> Oh, and they, they, did, also have they, they took that sucker in 4K or something. Damn. <laughs> the favorite part is that they have the sizing chart. And the thing they're comparing it to is a soda can. To a what? A soda, a soda can. Mm. Oh, a soda can. I didn't quite hear you when I was like, to a what? Oh boy. Yeah, that mm, that's okay. fun. Okay. Uh, Listen. Well, like I get that this is other people's things, but I don't know how I feel about a masturbator that looks like a demogorgon from Stranger Things. <laughs> I'm just like mm, mm, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, the masturbators are rather Interesting. I'm. Mm, uh, mm, I don't. Right. Mm, I right. don't know. I'm. I'm gonna. We're, you know what we're gonna do? We're not gonna keep working at that. You know what would be really great is if we ended this show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to see they also have condoms. Black light bullet vibrators, merchandising. Stickers, t-shirts, enamel pins, dice sets. Oh, come on, Damon. How could you pass up a bad dragon dice set? I haven't even gotten that far. <laughs> That's okay. All sorts oh, of sticker packs. Shirts. I've seen the jersey. Face masks, beanies, knee-high socks, glasses. My God, it's like a Zazzle store. <laughs> oh, I like the pride patch kind of thing. That's cute. Lanyards, gaming, play mats, playing cards, plushes. Good gravy. Teeny weenies. Oh, my. They've had a lot of fun. Yes. Anyway. I love that how the dice set. So it comes in two color sets. And then there's a little asterisk that it says, these are not silicone. <laughs> I must be missing the dice. I don't do dice. So the reason why I'm abused by that is because I'm guessing the rest of their products are uh, silicone based, but they wanted to make sure that people understood that their die set is 100% uh, resin, resin plastic, which would make sense. <laughs> it says, these are not silicone. It makes me laugh. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say it. Nope. Oh, God. No, that would be a fun conversation to have with my gaming group as I pull out the Bad Dragon dice set. Where'd those come from? Bad Dragon was born out of a strong desire for a greater selection of fantasy toys to be made available to everyone. Bad Dragon's main mission is to do their part in making fantasies real for individuals who want to indulge in their fantasies a little deeper. <laughs> That's a beautiful pun. Our entendre. Mm -hmm. Yeah, entendre is a better word. Hey, if anybody's interested in a job, they have some currently open positions and they are located in Phoenix, Arizona. There you go. Relocation assistance could be available for well qualified out of state candidates. Hmm. I think that means that they really want you. Yep. Interesting. Oh, and they even have retailers listed. Australia, Norway, Canada, Germany, the UK, Paris, San Francisco. My, my, my. Impressive. They're just getting into all kinds of places. 
really? <laughs> You're the one that started this episode in reaction to all those puns. <laughs> I so with that to. said, I, I know, to. I know. So with that said, yes, your co-hosts of Cubs Out Loud have done some personal research taking things in hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, definitely something to think about. And hey, if you're not catching this live on the 7th when we're recording it, which is legitimately National U.S. Masturbation Day, don't worry. Because the whole month of May is Masturbation Month. Yes. You could jerk off every day. Well, you're technically seven days too late, but um, you could jerk off every day and 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 celebrate the month the way right. it's intended. <laughs> you okay over there? No. It's just he's just breaking up. <laughs> and I believe the twenty eighth of the month is considered International Masturbation Day. Today so you can come the all over the world. Day? Yes. So you can come all over the world. <laughs> wow. Here we come. Anyway. Here we go. Oh, God. Go. I hurt myself for doing that one. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, there are plenty of ways to contact us and send us your pics of you celebrating this wondrous day or month. You could do that at CubsOutLoud.com and leave a comment on the blog. Well, maybe you don't want to put your picture there. But you can definitely email it to us at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Don't worry, we won't share it, except with, between the three of us. Uh, you can tell us about how you're enjoying the day by giving us a call at 361 Talk. That's 361-265-8255. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube at Cubs Out Loud, the appropriate place of the URL. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, you can also join our Entourage chat where you're welcome to share those pics with the entire Entourage at bit.ly slash telegram dash col. If you would like to know when we're plan planning on doing these shows and what the topic may be, you can check it out on our Google Calendar at bit.ly slash calendar dash col. It varies the accoutrements, such as on our Zazzle store at zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud, such as a pet toy or sex toy shirt or a handy towel or a logo shirt or flexibility for accessibility shirt that Gary's wearing. Mm -hmm. Gary doesn't frame his head towards the top. He always puts his head right in the center so you can only see like like just... Oh, for the love of fucking everything. Really? Is this how we're going to be? There we see? go. Now we can see uh -huh. that shirt better. Or you could just visit Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud and you can see the shirt there. Yeah, but they want to see it on you. <laughs> or on the floor mm. next to you. But that's <laughs> I was waiting that's for that. That's fair. I mean, that's fair. <laughs> Owen? <clears throat> Wow! Just calling that out, apparently. You can find other Anyways. works by Smash who designed the two shirts that Gary and I are wearing, as well as Gary, actually, and Demon Shirt. Even David. You can find it by Smash who you can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smash the Bear. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud or uh, send us a donation at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, you can find us on any of our pod podcasting platforms, such as Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. Please rate us, review us there. I, more people who do that, the more we get up in the algorithm, the more people can find us. You can find me anywhere on the internet, maybe at Box, Step Box, Puppy Box, Scott Box, something or other. Damon? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as TheaterCub79. That's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9. Um, on most bear related sites on Facebook, or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to find me online, you can pretty much find me anywhere as GareBear73. Got me that. Stick it out, everybody. Good night, everybody. Ciao for now. Bye.